Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to express my concerns and the concerns of people like the Pentland family, the Blacks, the Stakuras, the Groves, David Martin, Kevin Hall, and Greg Schmaltz. We want to share our concerns about our dissatisfaction with the continued inaction of this government to address the negative impacts that industrial wind turbines infrasound is having on communities. In April, the former Minister of Environment and Climate Change said, and I quote, no one should have to suffer noise or noise pollution from any source, and certainly not wind turbines in their community. But before he could visit Huron Bruce, he resigned. I have since invited the new Environment Minister on numerous occasions to visit these, with these people and see firsthand what they are living with. Speaker, the Ministry of Environment is not responding appropriately either. People like Joan Black, who gets it, wrote to me and said, I'm tired of complaining as apparently no one cares and they seem not willing to stop the noise. Or Patty Keller and Doug Ducharme just recently said, and I have to share with you, Doug's eyesight has been affected. They are feeling unsafe and unwell in their home as they're surrounded with three monstrosities. In closing, Speaker, on public record and for the fourth time, I would like to invite the Environment Minister to Huron Bruce to meet with these people and learn more about what they are living with so maybe he could do something. Thank you very much. Okay. Further member statements, the member from Welland. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Um, I was deeply troubled to hear yet more layoffs by Bell Media across Canada with jobs being cut at TV and radio stations, including HTZ FM in St. Catharines. Yeah. It is heartbreaking for employees and their families to be put through this so close to Christmas. Bell Media did exactly the same thing a year ago, affecting nearly 400 employees across the country. Now, Bell calls it restructuring due to the challenges in the media industry, yet only workers pay the price, while executive salaries and retention bonuses increase unchallenged. One, actually, that was reported, a $900,000 bonus uh, last year in addition to a million dollar salary. Job insecurity, inadequate wages, this precarious employment seems to be the story in many industries this day. In fact, the Liberal Federal Finance Minister Bill Morneau has suggested that young Canadians should just get used to precarious employment. It is clear that Kathleen Wynne's Liberals agree with their federal colleagues based on their recent inability or unwillingness to address the precarious work for Ontario's college faculty. Mr. Speaker, it is time this government prioritize Ontarians over re-election. It's time they stopped ignoring the job uh, insecurity growing in this province and in this country, and it's time for a plan to help our young people so they never have to get used to precarious work. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from uh, Trinity Spadina. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise today to speak about a very important issue, and it's about students, actually. On Friday, November 17th, the Toronto Star wrote about scams targeting Chinese international students. These scams involve phone calls to students claiming that they are under a criminal investigation and must not have a conversation with anyone other than the scammers. After the phoning the students, these scammers will phone their family in China asking for ransom money. I raise this issue in this house today to bring awareness to this very vulnerable portion of our population, the international students. Since 2010, international students' enrollment increased by 88.5% in Ontario universities. Today, we have over 100,000 international students in our 45 post-secondary institutions. Their economic impact on Ontario is undeniable. Each year, they bring over $11 billion to Canada. $5.4 billion is spent in this province. International students bring so much to our communities and institutions. They enrich the lives of our domestic students and their learning experience, but we must do more to make their stay in Ontario safer and fruitful. These scams hurt Ontario's reputation as one of the safest and most welcoming destinations for international students from around the world. I urge all members to work together to defend Ontario's reputation by protecting these future ambassadors and potential citizens of our great province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. On November 27th, the Caledon Parent Child Centre will hold an open house to mark 30 years in Caledon. 
Under, ship, under the leadership of Executive Director Teresa Colasanti, dedicated staff and committed volunteers have been helping families in Caledon for 30 years. Caledon Parent Child Center provides a variety of programs and supports for families in the Caledon area, including family time drop-in sessions, prenatal, postnatal and family development, child development programs, and assistance and support for children with special learning needs and their families. Trust me, Speaker, I know parenting isn't always easy. I'm proud to live in a community where such dedicated volunteers and staff strive every day to help their neighbours be better parents. Caledon Parent Child Centre is supported by charitable donations and the efforts of volunteers, its volunteer board of directors, and staff like Elisa Stanis Moraz, who has been with Caledon Parent Child Centre for 30 years, its entire existence. Congratulations, and on behalf of the hundreds of families who have benefited from Caledon Parent Child Centre, thank you and congratulations. Thank you for the member states. The member from Kitchener Waterloo. Thank you very much. So this summer, Waterloo Region lost an education champion and leader, Mary Johnston. As a community, we were fortunate to have Mary take a leadership role on so many issues. In many ways, she was the pioneer for women education leaders in Waterloo Region, breaking down traditional barriers with her trademark smile, laugh, and tenacity. She was a mentor to many. Mary served as a teacher, vice principal, and principal in schools across Waterloo. There is now an amazing school named after her, the Mary Johnston Public School, an honour she received upon her retirement. And when she began teaching in 1950, it was in a one-room schoolhouse in Barringer Road. By 1978, she was selected as the Outstanding Educator in Ontario. Mary was active in the Federation of Women Teachers of Ontario in OTF and ETFO. She was also the recipient of the Queen's Silver, Golden and Diamond Anniversary Medals. And I can say from personal experience, when Mary Johnston was in your corner, you felt supported at all times. I miss the days where she would cut out my trusty comments from a local newspaper and mail them just like my grandmother used to do, but Mary seemed happiest with children. Watching her interact with the students in her namesake school was, will stay with me always. I feel incredibly blessed to have known her and to call her a friend. Mary loved education and will be missed by all who knew her and learned from her. It was a life well lived. Thank you very much, Mary. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ottawa South. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today to acknowledge November as Diabetes Awareness Month. Speaker, one in three Canadians live with, living with diabetes or pre-diabetes, and every three minutes, another Canadian is diagnosed with diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic disease where the body can either, uh, either cannot produce insulin properly or, pro uh, or properly use the incident, uh, insulin produced. Diabetes Awareness Month helps shine a spotlight on the disease, treatment options, and helping people reduce their risk of developing type 2 diabetes. I would encourage everyone to visit diabetestest.ca to take the online CAN risk quiz where you can learn your risk level of developing type 2 diabetes. Regular exercise and eating a healthy diet will dramatically prevent, delay the onset of type 2 diabetes. Over the last 100 years, there's been dramatic research advancement resulting in the treatment and management of those living with the disease. And of course, Speaker, the invention of insulin was here in Toronto some 96 years ago by Frederick Banting. People with diabetes can expect to live active, independent lives if it's carefully managed. However, there's more work to be done to help prevent this disease and improve the lives of those living with it. Visit diabetes.ca to learn more. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the member's statements. The member from Chatham Kent has it. Thank you very much, Speaker. <clears throat> Last February, I tabled a private member's bill, Bill 94, to install cameras on school buses. The aim good is bill. to crack down on good. drivers who break the law by driving past stop school buses. Bill 94 passed second reading, but it then got stuck in legislative limbo. On November 1st, I learned what the government had done with my bill. The Attorney General introduced Bill 174, which deals with the legalization of cannabis, but other things were packed into that bill, including amendments to the Highway Traffic Act and the Smoke-Free Ontario Act and a version of my school bill. For better or for worse, the Trudeau Liberals decided to, li to legalize cannabis. Their self-imposed deadline is July 1st next year. Many Ontarians are justifiably concerned about this, and the cannabis bill requires some intense scrutiny and serious debate. Sadly, this won't happen because this desperate government has invoked time allocation. Shameful. What are they worried about? It needs more stakeholder input. Well, if the government wants to save time, here's what should be done. 
portions of Bill 174 that have nothing to do with the meeting of the July 1st cannabis deadline should be separated. Here, here. This means that amendments to the Highway Traffic Act, including my school bus camera amendments and changes to the Smoke Free Ontario Act, can be passed quickly. It is not right for the Liberals to hold up these important changes, and it is wrong for them to play games. What does cannabis have to do with school bus safety? My question is, what has this Liberal government been smoking? Thank you. Oh. Unfortunate. Member's statement. The member from Mississauga Streetsville. Well, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. This past Sunday, I and uh, some in total on, on the weekend, 600 attendees, were pleased to be invited uh, by the Fo Guang Shan um, uh, Temple in uh, Meadowvale in Mississauga to join them for an event that's only held once every three years, and it's called the Buddha's Light Vegetarian Gala. Now, at the gala, you're going to get all vegetarian food, and it's um, uh, the type that you wouldn't get at the fanciest Chinese restaurant. It's all prepared by volunteers. It's all served by volunteers. And the entertainment is something that you might expect out of um, uh, the finest uh, theater in Peking, in Beijing. And um, uh, all night long, in between the courses, there were excellent singing and dancing numbers. And of course, the, the drummers at Fo Guang Shan are without peer. And uh, most of the uh, local elected members were all invited to attend on either Saturday or Sunday. We were all pleased to come and to share with a community um, which is uh, gentle and um, uh, whose activities are so focused on our local charities and our local community. My congratulations to the venerable uh, Young Ku and to Mabel Lam, Glenn Chan, and Stanley Kwok for, and all of the uh, folks at Fo Guang Shan for a truly memorable Buddha's Light Vegetarian Gala in 2017. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member of statements, the member from Leeds, Grenville. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise to uh, tip my hat to Heather Howard. Wendy Banks and Gerald Tallman, the hat trick of recipients honored by the 2017 Bill Thick Memorial Economic Development Leadership Award. That's right, the award presentation at last Friday's annual Leeds and Grenville Economic Development Summit gave us three reasons to cheer. For the first time in the award's seven year history, all three nominees were named co winners. And when you look at the accomplishments of this triumphant trio, who could choose just one? Heather Howard operates the renowned duty-free shops at the Thousand Islands and Johnstown border crossings. Her beautiful Fox Run by the River retirement residence outside Gananoque has also undergone a major expansion. Wendy Banks is a trailblazer in the local food movement, making Leeds Grenville a destination for those seeking a unique local flavors experience. Wendy's Country Market in Lyndhurst and her mobile delivery service puts local farm products on the menu in restaurants and family kitchens across the region. <laughs> Gerald Tallman, who is incredibly charitable in the North Grenville community, built the Kempville Truck Center into the Tallman Group, which operates truck centers across the province and employs over 650 wow. people. Together, they represent the entrepreneurial spirit and good citizenship that grows the economy and sustains the communities in Leeds and Grenville. Friday's triple play gave people in every corner of Leeds Grenville a reason to celebrate. And I ask everyone to join me in congratulating the recipients and all who made this year's Economic Development Summit a huge success. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their uh, statements. It's therefore time for reports by committees.